Ah, forgot to mention the fact that we have used oven cleaner from Triumph, whatever you want to buy, but it has to be oven cleaner. It will eat off the soot and ash over there. And also you can use brick cleaner, doesn't matter what brand. But this is what we use to, to clean up the intake manifold. So in order to fit this uh, bracket holder, you have to press on the swivel arm over here and install it like this. It has a channel on this side which perfectly fits on the negative of, uh, on the positive of this uh, shape over here. And over here, after you have it installed, you will um, try and unscrew this Torx over here and it will go something like this. It will be held in place by this small bracket. Okay, so we have assembled everything back, back in place. We have a uh, new spring, we have the uh, aftermarket retainer and we have also the plate which holds the retainer as I said it stays on its negative side uh, base is on the servo motor and as you can see it doesn't go farther than the contact point which is allowed by the retainer plate so this will avoid the error once more you can see it stops over there doesn't move any further than that what I fear that over time is the metal part will eat into the plastic but uh, that's for time to tell so anyways this is the assembled intake manifold and right now we do the opposite of removal and I will show you as a fast forward how to install everything back into place one thing which I, is worth mentioning we have removed the Y plate which came from the bottom side of the block I don't know if you can see on the bottom side over there there's a hole with a 16 millimeter bolt and it it uh, rises up to underneath the these two bodies of throttle and uh, EGR port. We will install them without having those uh, the anchor plate in, in, in place. 10 newton meters is needed to tighten the bolts and we have one here, one over here and another one over here on the bottom side. And here. Over here. Okay, so... First of all, you need to set in the proper position this uh, this hose, this pressure hose, and then you need to attach the the gasket, and then you, we need to fiddle it into position. That should be it. And then you start them by hand. Try to do them in a crisscross motion. Normally, you have to torque these at 8 Newton meters, but thing is, there's no big difference between 8 and 10, and that doesn't really count for anything. Do them in crisscross pattern from inside to outside. Better buy a BMW or a Mercedes something. Don't buy a BMW. That's it. Ten newton meters.
So somehow you need to trick it with the flathead screwdriver you pry on against the the hose clamp and you can then insert the screw for the dipstick neck. Okay, so one one thing to mention is that after putting the manifold in, you have to start with the high pressure ramp uh, connector, which is just over here. Starting from here, we need to unscrew this one, this screw over here and then put it right there forget about this hidden screw which is just underneath this uh, hose This is the final result just before we put the top engine cover do not forget the sponge the acoustic sponge because we had the errors and also the because of the fact that we have worked on the vehicle i'm gonna do right now a uh, checking a uh, scan of errors and uh, we need first to activate the fuel pump this will create pressure in the system and eliminate the air bubbles. This so avoids creating um, metal filings, small metal filings within the fuel pump and the fuel filter. So you can still hear the fuel pump in the background hissing and pushing. Also we need to repeat this uh, three times, at least three times, to be sure that we have no air in the installation. Each cycle lasts about 40 seconds, so we will do it off camera, but uh, just know that you have to do it three times. After priming the fuel pump three times, you have to perform a calibration for uh, the swirl flap motor. You can find it just underneath the fuel supply and pump activation in the intake manifold runner motor function test adaptation and hit the on it's doing what it needs to do a 
I think this... Nope. Just a second, it still reads. It goes to the maximum on, maximum off position. Probably that's it. Then go back and that's, that's it. So this is um, the first uh, engine start after the repair. Clutch in. Engine has started and you need to let it air out for a couple of minutes. After that we will uh, scan and delete the codes and take the car for a test drive. <laughs> 